for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
How great thou art, how great thou art. Lord, you're just an amazing God, amazing God. How great thou art. There is a name that is above every name this morning. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Begin to put it over your doctor's report this morning. Begin to put it over your children, over your husband, over your wife. The name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. The name that is above fear this morning. The name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory, glory, oh Jesus, we just declare. 
declare you are great and awesome. You are great and awesome. And I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I was just so strongly sensing this morning that God is going to bring people through impossible situations. There's people He's going to bring through impossible situations in the natural. Hallelujah. God is going to do it. He's going to do it. And someone has lost an inheritance that should have come to them. That's going to find a way. Hallelujah. God is going to restore lost inheritance. Hallelujah. That somebody else got. It's going to come back to you. Hallelujah. Because our God is faithful and He's on the throne. Hallelujah. And He will remember His own. Our God is awesome. Hallelujah. We worship Him because of who He is. Amen. We worship Him because of who He is. What a great and awesome and mighty God. Hallelujah. We can sing praises to our God because He is just an amazing God. A prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prayer answering God. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Hannah, you're, you're a young woman. I just see breaking new ground, breaking new ground. There's some joint steps that you are going to take that are before you. You're going to break new ground. I just see you raising up a standard. You're raising up a standard in times past where you would have just melted away and you would have hit in the back sabbaticals. I just see you raising up and with a voice of boldness and authority and it's going to smash the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. To see you trumpeting the, the word of the Lord is going to come out of your mouth in a mighty way. Just a mighty river is going to gush forth. Awesome. Hallelujah. Estelle, I just get the words for you. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not. She's probably on Zoom. Fear not, for I am with you. Hallelujah. And Gavin, Gavin, glory to God, Gavin. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for Gavin. I thank you, Father God. The Lord is going to promote you in that workplace, Gav. He's going to promote you. Promotion is going to come. God is going to put you in charge of many things. You'll be one that's been faithful in the little things. God is going to put you in charge of many things. And I just see like the anointing of Joseph uh, in Potiphar's house. God is going to bless you in the place that you are in working. And people are going to seek you out. They're going to look at you and they're going to know that you're one that can be trusted. They're going to come to you and they're going to want to know advice. And you're going to give them such wise counsel and advice. And I just see many people that are up there, they're going to just come to you because you're going to have answers. And God is going to expand your territory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Deanna. I was thinking about Elijah, where he told his servant to go up and have a look at the sky. And he came back and he said, there is nothing. And Elijah said to his servant, go up seven times. And Deanna, I just see that you're a woman of prayer. There's a passion, there's a tenacity there. You're going to see your children being birthed into the kingdom of God. You're going to see your children being birthed into their destinies. And as you pray, you're going to see it turning around. You're going to see it turning around. God is going to move mightily, mightily, mightily. Hallelujah. And He's going to bring fast answers to your prayers, your prayers. They're reaching God's ears. He wants you to know that He's, he's hearing your prayers. They are coming before Him. Hallelujah. Sharon and Bill, I just see there's a new wave of glory. You're going to ride. Hallelujah. God is going to lift you up. He's going to lift you up and you're going to have a time of your life out there. It's like I just see you're soaring on the waves and you're just enjoying, enjoying the weather. You're enjoying the spiritual walk that you are on. God is lifting you up. And I just see even where the enemies wanted to buffet you in different ways. God is just strengthening you on the inside, hardening you to difficulty that has come against against you. And I see there's times when the, the enemy wants to place a wedge between you and I just pull that wedge out right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that you heal relationships, you heal this marriage. And Lord God, that they will be ones that will rise up, rise up to the occasion, Lord God, because you are moving in a mighty way, in a mighty way, what God has put together. Let no man put asunder. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you're doing awesome, awesome thing. And I just see financial blessing. I just see God reigning financial financial blessings upon you. I just see there's, there's inheritances around you that God has got for you. And there's a timing that those inheritances are going to come to you. And it's like, wow, look what the Lord has done. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvellous in our eyes. Mighty God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Belinda, I just see hurdles in front of you, but you're a woman of determination and I just see you're a woman that looks up to the Lord and you're gonna see those hurdles being removed. It's like the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. God is gonna minister to you and I just see you're gonna hit the mark. There's prayers that you're gonna pray. They're gonna hit the mark. They're gonna pull down strongholds. There's strongholds that you're coming against. You're gonna see those strongholds coming down and the power of God is gonna be a mighty force to break the strength of the enemy of those situations that have come against you. I just see that God has just been parting the waters. There's been friends that God's been removing out of your pathway and He's just giving you wisdom, wisdom, what to do, where to go, wisdom to go ahead. And God's counsel is there for you and He's ministering to you. He's comforting you. He's the lover of your soul. And I just see the Lord just releasing you from all fear, from all fear, from anxiety. He's just taking it off of you and the burdens and the stress that has been plaguing you. I just see the Lord releasing that from you because it's starts to affect your body on the inside and the Lord's just bringing peace. It's like He's inhaling His breath, His breath of fresh air. He's inhaling strength into you and you're going to rise up as a woman of tenacity and it's like everywhere the enemy has come to pound at you, you're going to rise up and you're going to knock him out. Hallelujah. Because God's given you the power and authority. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Who's on Zoom this morning? Glory to the Lord. Barry and Charmaine, I just see an arrow that's been sharpened and sharpened and in sharpened even more so. Sharpened, hallelujah. And it's going to be so precise when you're going to speak to people. It's like you're just going to know exactly uh, what, they, what they have need of. It's, they're going to come and tell you one thing, but you're going to know in the Spirit. No, that's not, not about anything to do with that. But this is what God is saying to me. And the words are going to be so precise, so accurate. God is lifting you up and I just see a higher standard. He's bringing you you into and there's dreams in your heart, dreams in your heart. And you wonder how on earth some of those dreams are going to be fulfilled. But God says, not by might, not by power, but it's going to be by my spirit. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. And Sylvia, uh, Wesley, Sylvia, I just see a woman of power, a woman of authority. Hallelujah. And there's times when the enemy wants to blow that fire out. But I just see a woman of tenacity. You're booting that enemy out. Glory to the Lord. I just see a flame of fire, a passion, a determination in you. It's like, Caleb, give me this mountain. We are well able. We can certainly do it. And I just see you and Wesley just running up that mountain. Hallelujah. Running up the mountain because God is going to give you the victory. Now, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in the Lord Jesus Christ. I just see the peace of God just settling upon you, Sylvia, and the Lord giving you peace and is giving you strength. Hallelujah. You've got something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. And the Lord's peace is there. That peace that passes all understanding. This is the day when you're going to, I just see the great things that you've prayed for, great things for family, for loved ones. You're going to see the unfolding of God's purposes and plan. There's much seed, Sylvia, that you have sown. There's, you, you, it's like well, you've sown in tears. You are going to reap in joy. You are going to reap in joy. God has not forgotten about the sacrifices, about the giving, about the, the what, all the things you've done over them. It's been many, many years. When you've put yourself aside, and you've thought of other people. God is mindful of everything that you have done and He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And I just see even relationships where relationship at times have been, have been estranged. God is gonna knit hearts with cords of love that cannot be broken. I just see healing in relationships. God is gonna break down the walls, breaking down the walls and He's gonna just raise a standard and bring peace in your borders. He's gonna bring peace in your borders. And you're just going to know that you know that God is with you, that God is with you. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Amen. And Julie, Julie, I just see that God is just lifting you up. He's lifting you up above all the circumstances, about the storms. And I just see there's a lot of debris around about you because I just see the storms of life have been trying to bring such discouragement around about you. It's like the winds of adversity have been blowing fierce and wild around you. But the Lord is just lifting you up and He's lifting you up and He's placing you in His arms of love. And I just see the Lord just comforting you and pouring His love into you. His love, the love that you crave for, the love 
love that you desire to have is pouring that love into you. And it's just like melting away all the hurt, all the pain, all the discouragement, all the disappointment. It's just melting it all away. And the Lord's just strengthening you on the inside. I just see there's areas where the, where the enemies wanted to undo un, undo you and, and cause you to stumble and fall. The Lord is removing those obstacles and those blockages and you are just walking free. I just see a woman with freedom and liberty on the inside and it's going to just accelerate that, li- that liberty and freedom that God has given you. And you're going to see family, family, loved ones. I just see family and loved ones where they've been in prison. It's like you're going to pray and you're going to see those prison doors open and they are going to come out of that prison. Hallelujah. And God is going to give you the desire of your heart regarding even your children and loved ones, those that are so much on your heart. You are going to see changes. You're going to see changes. Do not throw away your confidence for it will be richly, richly rewarded because God is going to move mightily. Hallelujah. And you are going to see miracles. I just see a beautiful heart of love and compassion. And it's like where you go, you just you just cause that aroma of Jesus to flow out of you wherever you go. It's like they can be blind, lame, main. They can be in the gutter. It doesn't matter to you because you are no respecter of persons. You'll just look at someone and you'll smile and the love of Jesus just flows out of you. You're just amazing, Julie. Keep doing what you're doing because God is with you and your greatest days lie before you. And and Judy, hallelujah, God is going to cause you to have victory. Now, thanks be unto God, hallelujah, because He's going to cause you to triumph in situations where the enemy has hemmed you in between a rock and a hard place. God is going to cause you to have victory. I just see that wall of Jericho being broken down and the powers of darkness fleeing in the name of Jesus. And and I just see, Judy, that you are going to have favour, favour in the workplace, favour in the workplace. People are going to call upon you because because there's something that they're going to see inside of you. They're not going to know quite what it is, but they're going to see such a loveliness, such a godliness, such a beauty coming, flowing out of your life. And they are going to call upon you. Are they going to seek you? I just see that you're going to have favour where others have been there a long time. And it's like they're going to miss out, but God is going to bring you to the forefront. He's going to cause your name to be talked about. He's going to cause your name to be mentioned. And God is going to bring promotion. Promotion, Judy. Promotion is going to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Eli, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Just see the Lord's going to smooth some things out that are before you. There's been some turbulent situations swirling around about you, but the Lord doesn't want you to be concerned about anything because He lives. You can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone. You're a mighty man of valour. Hallelujah. You're a mighty man of valour, Eli. And like Paul the Apostle in Philippians, he says, I can do all things because it is Christ who strengthens me. Do not worry about tomorrow. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he's going to bring you through all those. Test one, two, three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay. uh, Everyone ready for communion? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that awesome words that Yara brought this morning? You know, so Judy and Julie. That Julie was Julie, that Judy's sister, isn't it? A few Julies there. That's Julie's, uh, Judy's sister. Um, all right, so anyone can pick up the Word of God. I mean, if, it's, if, it, if the cap suits, you put it on. I mean, hallelujah. When God speaks, He speaks to everybody. Thank you, Lord. I believe even the Word that God was giving Judy this morning, I feel that I sense in my heart that, you know, all what's going on with this COVID thing and Delta virus and all this stuff, sort of stuff that is going around, God is bringing people into, into workplaces or wherever you are, on the streets, on the shopping centers. That word that Yara gave Judy just now, the light of God, you have the answer for every problem out there. God is drawing his people into a place that you're going to carry that power and anointing. Every one of you, you have got it inside of you. It has been there, it has been there for a while, but all what has been happening around the world God is activating his people and they're going to be examples of Jesus Christ. The light is going to shine brighter than ever before. You just got to believe it, church. It's there inside of you. Not this little light of mine. It, there you have to be a powerhouse. Get, get excited, church. Prophesy, speak it before you leave home that something is going to happen. You're going to meet somebody. Expect. If you don't, get, if you don't expect your healing, you can pray as much as you want. You, you expect your healing and you will get it. Amen? 
If you don't expect your salvation, you're not going to get it. Because Jesus has died for you. It's there for you. You've got to expect that it's yours. And the good news is, it's not your righteousness. You need to sink in some people. You need to sink because you're doubting it. Somebody, someone is doubting their salvation. It's not. I'm the righteousness of Christ. My righteousness is filthy rags. I'm going to get a message soon on the one. Because we need to break the stigmas and, and the wrong teachings out of our lives. It's because it, regardless of what you have done, is not going to get another reward in heaven, regardless of what you have done. You already made it to heaven. Your spirit is perfect in God. You are the righteousness of Christ. Wasn't the worship fantastic today? You know, when those, you, know, you can worship him for that alone, church, that you are the righteousness of Christ because of what he has done on Calvary. It, even the thought of that, I feel like getting on my knees and worshiping him. Not because I polish my life, but it's the righteousness of Christ. And you will want to worship him more and more and more. And it's the goodness of God that will turn you to repentance when you get a total revelation of that. Keep declaring it and declaring it, that you are precious in the sight of God. That's why he bled for you. I mean, look at the songs and the words that were sung today. You are precious. Everyone, keep saying it. Look at the mirror. Look into your eyes, the eyes of the windows of your soul, and say, I am precious. I don't care what you did yesterday. Because Jesus made you so beautiful. Amen. Start believing it. Start declaring it. His love and grace is, I'm not giving you the license for anything, but he chose me when I was in the Maori Clay. What am I to say? To change his mind? <laughs> no, I accept what he, he loved me first. I said he loved me first. You've got to get a revelation of that one first. He loved me first. Because he loved me, I love him. I'm the disciple that the Lord loves. And don't be jealous of that one. Hallelujah. Glory. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We join our faith together, Lord God. Lord, we believe, Lord, that you loved us first, Lord. As we hold this bread, Lord, we remember the price you paid. Lord. We remember, Lord, the love you have for us. Lord, let that love be more deeper than any other time of our life, Lord God. Lord, that we will fall in love with you over and over again. That you will get sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Lord, we remember, Lord, the love that you, you gave us, Lord. The love that you poured down on Calvary every part of our innermost being, Lord, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, socially, financially, you broke every curse, Lord. As we remember, Lord, that you paid the price in full, Lord. And we bless this bread, Lord, and we eat together and receive everything that you have purchased for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Every time I think of you, the praises start, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this precious moment, Lord, as we remember that you paid, Lord. You gave every drop. You gave your life, Lord, to ransom me, to ransom everyone at the sound of my voice. Because you died that none would perish. Those in hospitals, Lord, those who cannot breathe today, Lord. Those who are sick, Lord, children, Lord. Those in homes, Father. You died for them, Lord. You died for our Prime Minister. You died for every member of Parliament, Lord. Whichever one, Lord, we like or dislike, you bled for them. You bled, Lord, for the worst sinner, Lord. 
You bled and you died for everyone out there, Lord God, for the media, Lord God, for every premier across the nations. Father, we come in agreement today, Lord God, that every curse that has been spoken over their lives will be broken will be broken, Father. Forgive us for our thoughts, our actions, our ways, Lord God. Lord, we want to plant good seed this morning, Father, because we need the grace for our families, for our loved ones, for our children, our grandchildren, Lord. The same grace we give to every premier across this nation, Lord God. Every prime minister and president, Lord God, whether we like them or not, Lord, you, Jesus, that you died, that none of them would perish. When we were in our darkest time, Lord, you reached out and you revealed your love to us. Today we receive that love and we give that love to everyone, Lord. Everyone, Lord, our opinions against them, forgive us for our negative thoughts, our actions, our ways, Lord. We release those people today, Lord God, that no curses will strike them. But we bless our enemies, Lord God. You said to bless them, Lord, the same way, the same blessing, Lord, that we need for our families, for our lives, Lord God. We release that blessing as we receive everything that you have purchased for us today and drink in agreement for those in darkness will see a great light that the church will never curse or think anything wrong against anyone in authority, but we will cry out for those in authority that their souls will be saved by you, Lord. The same love we need for our families, Lord. We release it for those ones, Lord, we got opinions about. Father, we release them today and we drink together, Lord, and celebrate the victory over this nation and nations around the world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap, church. Thank you, Lord. He is mighty. He is mighty. He is worthy. Come on, church. At football teams, you know, you give a better clap for a football player. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Beke Shangara, Barundara, Bakandara, Mangana. You are actually slapping the devil out of out of your home, out of your life, out of your finances. You need to keep on clapping. Amen. You, you, you actually give a nightmare to the devil every time you clap to Jesus. He's a nightmare. Amen. Hallelujah. The light is going to shine brighter and brighter, church. Okay. Um, yeah, about three weeks ago, the Lord uh, really impressed in my heart that I'm planted in this church for a reason and all of the messages that come out of this church, I, I need to make sure that I'm not just listening once. I need to listen over and over again when scriptures are mentioned, go through the scriptures and really I'm here for a reason. I need the messages that are being preached out of this church to transform and change my life and my family's life and I'm seeing transformation. So praise God. All right. Anyone else got something quickly? Femi. All right. Anyone else got something quickly? Femi. Yes. Sorry. Um, I actually got something yesterday. Um, I was on the phone in the morning, and um, I get on the phone with Brother Nelly, and I fell asleep actually while it was on because it was in the morning, very early. And I started to have a dream. And um, I dreamt that I was living very close to the beach and there was a builder that came and he was looking at my house and he said, your house is in good run and said, it's all good. Then the builder actually started to go into the water, which was very smooth style thing. And then the water was backing right up, like it was getting ready for a big wave coming, like a tsunami. And the builder just went for it. He was just going towards that wave, and um, he 
Thank you. Thank you, family. That's awesome. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. You can sense it too. Like I said, things are going to happen in a way you never expected. Expect something when you go into the shopping center or your workplace or wherever you go. Anyone else got something before Norm comes forward? Quickly. Come on, Bill. We got another. Yeah, I just uh, saw through worship. Um, the Lord was granting revelation. Uh, I saw people on Zoom and people in here just granting revelation. And sometimes uh, the scripture says we're in the world, but we're not of it. And sometimes we allow the circumstances of life and, and everything that's happening to, to enter into our hearts. And the Lord was bringing revelation that we were seeing what our hearts was engaged in. And in that moment, we would be able to repent and just from getting caught in those situations. So I saw that pretty much for most people. I mean. um, probably just for those people, what I saw, um, um, Lee, is it? Um, I just, uh, and this is along that same vein, I just, and it'll happen in due course where the Lord will just drop that in the spirit. But I saw you... Not like a Martha, but just moving furniture around. You know, sometimes we get busy and you were just moving that around and you went to maybe this one chair and the Lord was sitting in that chair and at that moment you suddenly realised you just started to worship the Lord. You know, you, you stopped what you were doing and you just rested at the feet of the Lord. And um, uh, for Robin, down the back, um, I saw you in a room and there were doors on every aspect of the room, and it was like they could, they were open, and you were testing each, each, each uh, door to open. But there was like a confusion. You weren't sure which way do I go? Do I go this way, that way, and all these things? And in the midst of that, the Lord stood before you, and then you suddenly had that revelation that Lord Jesus, you are the door, and I saw you entering into His presence, into His life. I saw that for you, and um, just for the lady down the back. Just not sure your name, Lorna. Um, I'd seen things in your life. Uh, it's like we build things and, and just putting things together and things, circumstances in life, and it's like these things fall over in life. And, and not that there was a reluctance, but it was like a, a reservedness to continue building things. And, um, but I just saw there again a revelation coming to you in the Lord. And it was a time to just start to build things, just those things in your heart, that type of thing to go forward. It was like the revelation is going to remove the fear of the past and just be able to go forward and preparing those things. And uh, just for your husband as well, um, you're going to come into a place of rest in the presence of the Lord. And in that place, you're just going to find a deep inner peace, a love, and just uh, you're going to grow in the things of the Lord. I saw like a, a rope um, in a gymnasium and um, the Lord was beside you and, and sometimes in our zealousness to, to seek out the things of God, it was like you were climbing up this. But unknowingly, the higher you were wanting to climb, you were moving away from the Lord and we all seem to do that in our zealousness. And then as you came to this place of rest, you, you recognised the Lord beside you and um, that revelation, I sense the Lord is granting. So. Amen. <laughs> um, for David Page, um, I shared with him yesterday, I saw a house that windows to be opened and, and he permitted the Lord to open these windows in his house to let the air come in, this fresh air of the Holy Spirit. And today I just saw the Lord was granting you a strength to resist ever shutting these windows, just to allow these windows to be open. 
and to remain open. So I saw that for you. And uh, Wesley, uh, you know that scrim- scripture where it says the simplicity of that which is in Christ Jesus. And I just see there again a revelation. Guys, just bring you to this place that you're just coming to this place of the simplicity of that which is Christ. Whatever's busyness, whatever's this, it's like you're just putting it away, putting it away. And Belinda, um, so um, it was like in your heart, you were examining your heart and you saw this black root. And as you started to pull this black root, it was a huge black root. And God had given you this ability just to uproot it. And there was no pain, there was no frustration, there was no tears, there was no... It was just like, how easy is this? It's just the root of the past, but it's not how we would normally do it, but you just had an ability in the Lord to remove this root. So, from Revelation, amen. Um, Just on uh, for Zoom, um, uh, there's Julie and Judy, uh, the sisters, um, the twins, yeah. Um, there again, I saw for both of you the circumstances of life were just encroaching into your hearts. And um, for Julie, I just saw there was all these voices, all these mouths all around you just speaking at you. And, and there again, it was like the Lord had just given you this ability. I'm not listening to you anymore. All these voices that were screaming. And it was like you'd come to a place of repentance. I'm not listening to the voices, but I will choose to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And same for uh, Judy, same thing. There was all these arms wanting to reach out to you, all the circumstances to pull you into the circumstances. But same thing, you'd come to this place um, that no longer will I let them affect me and this revelation just brought you to a place that your eyes just looked upon the Lord. So, amen. And um, just for, I think I saw Adam there before. And um, Adam, you were, it was like you had this weight and it was like the giftings of God, the ability, these things, but it was a burden to you. And um, all of a sudden the, the Lord had granted revelation and wisdom that it was like the gifting and the calling, you were handing it to the Lord. And just in one moment you could see it was a good thing, but you weren't to carry it and you were just to rest it in the hands of the Lord. Amen. I could be here all day. And uh, thank you all. Um, don't forget the tithes and offerings too, please. Thank you, everyone who have been giving and supporting and standing with us. You know who you are. The money comes into the bank in, in spite of what's happening. God is, and I pray, I pray for everyone who has been giving right now and who have been standing with us, even for the ones who cannot give. Father, we lift them up right now, Lord God. Lord, that you open the heavens, Father God. Lord, we believe your word, that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon everyone at the sound of my voice, Lord. Everyone, Lord. That you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they will not have enough room to contain it right now, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you will... Lord, you are a promise keeper, Lord God. Thank you, Father, the doors that you open, Lord, that no man can shut, Father God. Lord, that you lead them, guide them. Lord, those who have been standing, Father God, Lord, and and giving, Lord God, you remember them today, Lord, when you grant favor to your people, Father. Lord, grant them favor right now, Lord. Bless their entire households and their generation, Lord that the blessings of Abraham will come upon them in a mighty way. Lord, we decree it and declare it today, Father, for that unity and bonding that you are building in this house, Lord God, that nations will be affected, Lord. Lord, for the vision of this church, Lord God, Lord, I pray that it is flowing on into, into nations, Lord, into cities, into nations, transforming lives, Lord, near and far, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said... Okay, Norman, are you ready? This is really important what I'm going to talk about. Um, thank you, Lord. I ask Holy Spirit help right now. In Jesus' name, amen. This is really important. So to, we're heading into 
I want to talk about the, the four feasts again because we're heading into that period of time. Biblical chronology is really important. I don't know if anyone's ever looked, but has anyone noticed that things, certain things seem to happen certain times of the year? It's like when you study Bible chronology, you find out like the temple was destroyed on the exact same month, the exact same day, day <laughs> three times or how many times it was destroyed. And everything happens in patterns and, and, and cycles. Now, God's put together a, like he calls them his feasts or a divine appointments with us on specific times because it's really important that he wants to meet with us and he wants to do something really specific. And the best thing about these um, feasts is that they're circular. They're like they're going in a circle. Every year you repeat through the pattern. They're actually patterns of what I call cycles of sanctification. But they're more than that. Every time you go through, you go higher and higher and higher. And I'm expecting that this year coming up, so we're coming into Rosh Hashanah on the 6th to the 8th of September. You might turn it down a little bit, sorry. 6th to 8th of September. And that's what they call the new year. Now, we want a different year than we've had, hey? (laughs) This year's been a bit nuts, so I'll go through that. Now, in Leviticus 23, 14, could you put Ox 8 on the projector? Please. There we go. Thank you. Leviticus 23, 14 says that this is a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. In other words, it's never cancelled or done away with. It's perpetual. We should be going through this. Now, on God's pattern, you can see here, we went through Passover this year. We went through unleavened bread, Kananioma and Shavuot, which is Pentecost. Now, this is the part where God says, Will you marry me? And we've said yes. And that's an important stage. But now we're coming through to the culmination of that whole process where he's going to do something really deeper and more powerful. This is a blueprint of redemption. This is how your salvation works. You need to understand it. If you understand the pattern, then things work. Now, we, I, this is a bit closer view. We come down through here. We had Pentecost. Now we come over to now. So Rosh Hashanah is coming up on the 6th to the 8th of September. And we're going to do something really special and powerful for it. But before this period of time is what they call the month of Elul. And it's Elul is meant to be the blasting of shofars, calling out, proclaiming something is about to take place. And we're meant to get ready. We're meant to prepare ourselves for it because he wants to do something in each and every one of our lives. Now, I'll go back here. Sorry. Come on. (laughs) So Rosh Hashanah is the beginning. All these are tied together. Yom Kippur is the day of atonement. A lot of people in this church, when they've understood atonement, have received healing and breakthroughs in their lives. It's more than just forgiveness. It's washing away and making you innocent, making you pure, making you whole again. God wants to do this. So this process goes then to Feast of Tabernacles. Another way of saying Tabernacles is God wants to tabernacle with us. He wants His dwelling presence in us. This is what revival's about. Now I'm trying to say here, get the pattern right and let's have revival because now more than ever we need the demonstration of the kingdom of heaven on earth. The eighth day is like a celebration of the messianic reign and rule of the king. So this is Revelation 19, 7 to 8. For the marriage of the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. We're making ourselves ready. It was granted to her to clothe herself with fine linen, linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Now, I'm just going to show you a quick video on Rosh Hashanah. And there's a lot in this. I'm only going to give you a brief introduction and I'm going to introduce some new concepts. Rosh Hashanah is the start of a new year in the Jewish calendar and a moment to take stock of your soul. Unlike January 1st, it's serious stuff. It's said that on this day, God takes special note of us and our behaviors, writing us into the book of life. It's time for reflection. Where have you missed the mark? 
How can you grow and improve yourself this year? Where do you need to seek forgiveness? The last line of the poem read on Rosh Hashanah, the Unatana Tokef, is a super concise guide to how we start the new year off right. Teshuva and Tefila and Sadaka. Teshuva and Tefila and Sadaka. Let's break those down. Tshuva, the word for spiritual realignment, comes from a Hebrew root that means return. It gets translated usually as repentance. It's more like remembering who you truly are and striving to return there. Rosh Hashanah is actually a step along in the process of Teshuvah, which starts a month earlier on the first of Elul and then kicks into high gear with the high holidays. Rosh Hashanah is two days long. It's full of food, prayer, and some creative rituals. Its name means head of the year, and has a lot of other names too. Sephardi Jews have a Rosh Hashanah Seder including foods with names that are puns in Hebrew. For instance, the head of a fish gives you an excuse to say, so that we may be like the head and not the tail. It's like saying, get your head in the game. When you see people on Rosh Hashanah at synagogue or on the street, you can shout out Shana Tova or Shana Tova, which just means have a good year. This is Tefillah, connecting through prayer. A highlight for many is singing the beloved melody Avinu Malkeinu. You also hear the Torah stories of Abraham and Sarah, Hagar and Ishmael, and the famous Binding of Isaac story. And you'll hear the sounding of the shofar, the kia, that's the one little one. Then shivari, that's a three for. And then there's trua, and that's like a machine gun. And then the long one, Gadola, comes from Gadol, which means big. And it's long. In the Torah, hearing the cries from a ram's horn is a key mitzvah, or commandment, of Rosh Hashanah. The 100 shofar blasts, there are three types, are meant to arouse and to awaken each person. There's a beautiful daytime ritual that is very engaging for kids called tashlich. People toss breadcrumbs into a nearby body of water to symbolically cast away old habits and mistakes. Rosh Hashanah is also a time of year to consider how to do more tzedakah, justice in the world, through community projects, taking a stand on important issues, or giving charity. Say after the high holiday appeal to your synagogue. At the new year, we turn the pages of our own life's book, be it tattered, torn, or terrific. Rosh Hashanah is an auspicious moment in time that invites us to wonder, what's the next chapter of my life all about? So, who's ready for a new start? <laughs> now, it's, this is, I think it's really, really important because it is really important. I want to introduce a new concept and maybe we can talk about it a bit more, but I'm just going to give this to you. There's something in the Bible about a, 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 the, Jews pick, the Jewish people call it like a severe decree. It's like a decree that this is what's going to happen for you the coming year. Now, the, they believe, and I believe it's pretty strong, like what's due for you will happen. Like God's going to set out that this coming year, you're going to have so much money coming in and you won't have anything more, and you won't have anything less. You're going to have this much health. You're going to have this happen. Now, a severe decree is something that happens that can be to avert something else more tragic or it could be because generational issues that are coming down the line or things that have been done and God doesn't want you to suffer too much, but things happen. Now, I'm going to... Um, I need to read that this is a part of a marshal in Hebrew, which means where we get parable. It's a creative story to give you an insight behind what's actually going on in the spirit realm. What I'm trying to get at is a lot of us have decrees on our lives that we need to get removed. We don't want to repeat of what happened the past year, do we? I've had decrees on my life. I had a long period of my life where it didn't matter how hard I worked or what I did, I was broke. I was so broke, I was starving. <laughs> and I couldn't get work. I couldn't keep work. It's like something was stopping me from changing. And it's like that got broken off my life and now I don't have that problem. Praise be to God. So sometimes a sadiq, a righteous person, suffers for the sins of the generation. Again, we don't understand how it works. 
Sometimes what seems like an affliction is not really an affliction at all. A guy's store can burn down and you think that's tragic, but underneath it, there could be a treasure. So sometimes we go through things. I'm going to teach a lot more about this to do with faith. So this is a a parable. He said, there once was a wise person who did not understand, who, who knew the language of the birds. He could actually, he went out in the field and he listened and he could hear what the birds were saying. Now, when he was out in the field listening to birds, this guy named Jack came along and said, what are you doing? He says, I'm talking to the birds. He says, oh, you've got to teach me. Teach me what these birds are saying. He says, no, the, the, the wise man said, no, no, this is not for you. You don't want it. He says, please, please, I want to understand how do I listen to the birds? Now, he said, okay, let's, let's do this. So for a few weeks, he went out with his wise guy, Jack, and he learned how to listen to all the nuances and understand the language of the birds. Um, now, Jack went out to finally go practice what he learned. So on the first day, he went out to listen to the birds and what the birds were saying. This is what the bird says, that tomorrow there's going to be a fire in Jack's warehouse. And Jack went, oh, the birds are telling me the future. So what he did, he went home and he told all his uh, employees, get rid of all, take all the furniture, everything out of the warehouse. That night, lo and behold, the warehouse burned down. But because he moved everything out of the warehouse, he saved all that, all his goods. The next day, he goes out and listens again. The birds are saying, tomorrow, the price of silver is going to drop drastically. Jack says, I own so much silver. So he goes home and he sells all his silver and then he goes, shorts the market. And lo and behold, that night, the price of silver drops. He makes a killing on the market. He's rich. He says, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Then he goes out the third day and listens to the birds. And the birds say, there's going to be a burglary tonight because the thieves had heard about how much money he made. They're like, let's go rob Jack. So Jack goes, he goes to the police and says, they get the police at eight o'clock, you know, they're all there with their guns hiding. And lo and behold, a burglar shows up to steal his goods and the police jump out and grab him and he saves all his, all his, all his stuff. Now he's going, wow, this is so good. Now, he comes out the next day and he talks to the birds and the birds say, today, Jack is going to die. And Jack goes, oh, what am I going to do about this? So he goes back to the wise, wise man and says, the birds told me that I'm going to die. What am I going to do? And the wise guy says, I told you, this is not for you. <laughs> he says, you do not understand. He says, like, what do I do? How do I protect myself? I don't want to die. And the wise man says that God had a decree upon you of death a week ago, but he loves you so much and he wanted to save you from death that he's first going to take away your money. So it's like the money instead of of death. But you prevented it. Then Then he tried to make you lose all your silver, but you prevented that. And then he gave one more chance for the burglars and you intervened and... So there's nothing to hit. So the, the, the idea of the story, don't take it literally about learning to listen to the birds, but it's trying to show you that sometimes things happen because they need to happen and maybe what seems bad is actually not as bad as what it's actually meant to happen. But there can be decrees upon our lives because of things that we've done or even it can be past generational or things that we've said that need to be changed. I mean, there's a story in the Bible, I can't remember where or the name of the person, but the prophet said that you're going to die in X amount of time. And he, Hezekiah. And it's like he averted the evil decree by repentance and lived a lot longer. Now, this is, so this is what I'm trying to get at. Now, Unatana Tokev, as you heard of that, is, means let's speak of the awesomeness. It's a poem that's been part of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur liturgy and radic- rabbinical Judaism for centuries. It's the central theme of the holidays. It's chanted while the Torah ark is open and the congregates are standing. It's a central poem. So this is what it says. 
On Rosh Hashanah, it is inscribed. And on Yom Kippur, it is sealed. How many shall pass away and how many shall be born? Who shall live and who shall die? Who shall reach the end of his days and who shall not? Who shall have rest and who shall wander? Who shall be at peace and who shall be pursued? Who shall be at rest and who shall be tormented? Who shall be exalted and who shall be brought low? Who shall become rich and who shall become impoverished? But repentance, prayer and righteousness avert the severe decree. So you can see what happens at this period of time, depending upon what's happened and what you've done this year, will determine what's going to come up next. So this is why I'm saying what I'm talking about is so important to understand. We need to do something practical this morning and for the rest of this month leading up to Rosh Hashanah to get rid of any severe decrees against our lives, to be able to have a brand new, fresh start so that we can go into this year seeing the kingdom of heaven breaking forth in our lives, in our families, in our finances. To me, prophetically, the end is meant to be greater than the, the former. The, the latter rain is greater than the, I think that thing is. I'm trying to say is that God wants to have a beautiful church without spot and wrinkle. The church is meant to look like he looks. We're meant to be a representative of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And things have to change. So it is sealed. So that's why we work on it. Elul is a special time of preparation for Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, we are, along with the whole world, are going to be judged. It's similar to your tax time. June 30th, you have an accounting that has to take place for everything that you did for the previous year. And that determines on how much tax you're going to pay or how much refund you're going to get. Now, the same thing goes on Rosh Hashanah. There's an accounting that takes place. Now, um, Elul is given as a time for for preparation before the tests. It's not just a review of what we've done. It's not just a time of judgment, but it's more a time of calling us up higher, reminding us of who we are, and who we are meant to be. Along the lot, I really believe we've forgotten who we are. We, we don't know who we are. So Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Lady explains a, par- a paradox about Elul with a metaphor. So the king's usual place, like God, our king, his usual place is in his palace. Now, we go through our work week and we do work and stuff. That's like being in the, in the field, Now, once a week, we come out of our fields and we go up to the palace to meet the king, like church or synagogue. Now, at that time, when we come to synagogue or we come to church, we have procedures and things that we have to go through in order to approach the king. This is why we come with worship and sacrifice so that we can be drawn into the presence of God. Now, Elul, they say, is a special time where the king comes down from his palace and he comes to us in the field and he's asking us a question. What do you want for this coming year? How do you want me to help you? What, how can we connect? How can we be closer? So he's asking you a question. He's coming to you and saying, here I am. Now, there's nothing worse in life than getting off track. There's nothing worse than going to heaven and finding out you did not fulfil your destiny. Rosh Hashanah is the gift given by God where God's saying, my beloved, I know we got off track, but like every year, we're going to get you back on track. This is like why I'm talking, this is repentance. We've got to get ready for what's going to happen. If we ignore that the king is in our field saying, hey, I'm here, how, how can, I want to be your king. And a king's not just uh, somebody that is far removed from. In a biblical king is not somebody that's far removed. A biblical king is somebody that wants to come and get involved in the nitty gritty details of every part of your life. As King Yeshua, Jesus said, he counts and knows every single hair on your head. But he wants to become king 
of every hair on your head. So hopefully I don't lose any more. But um, he cares about the minute details. But he needs to be invited and made king. And if he's made king, he can reign and rule over that area. Uh, so the choice is up to you today. So what happens at Rosh Hashanah depends on how you prepare. Think about what has happened in the last year. Do we want change for this coming year? What price or effort are you willing to put into to seeing a change? Do you want this coming year coming up? I'm talking about the, the biblical year. Do you want it to be the same as the last? Or are you willing to put the time in now to prepare for Rosh Hashanah? where things are going to change. God is saying, let us do it together. Let me help you. Let me be a partner with you. But it's up to you. This is what this period of time is. So Rosh Hashanah, it means head of the year. Another day, name for it in the Bible is called Yom Teruah, the day of the shouting or blasting, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year where we coronate God as our king for a new year. The sound of the shofar is a sound of coronation of trumpets, saying he's, he's the only king. So today is the seventh day of Elul, 5781. As the new year comes with a reckoning, so is, I already said that, sorry. The books are open. The deeds of the past year are scrutinised. The decision whether our lives get inscribed in the book of life or the book of death for the coming year. That's the language of the book of Revelation. So if your name goes in the book of life, you get another year. If it goes in the book of death, you don't get to see 5781 out. This is the basic idea. In other words, it's pretty serious. We are repenting for what's written in the book. We're getting ourselves out of debt. Um, the Bible calls this day a day of fire, a fire offering of prayer and worship services. We pray remembering Abraham, Isaac and Abraham's obedience and sacrifice for his son. Upon the merit of Abraham, our debt is wiped out. That's what Jews see. But we go a bit further and go, we see our father, sacrificed his son and upon his merit, the debt's taken away. Um, it's an obligation to hear the shofar blast in the congregation. So I want to have a look at the, closer look at the, the shofar. Jenna, if you can show me. So this is one, but we've got a few of them. This is a cool one. I like it. It's big. It's so big must be better. Um, <laughs> there's... The little tiny small one to do. Now on Rosh Hashanah, we're going to talk more about this and what it represents and how it works. But for today, I just wanted to get you guys and an the idea of understanding what Elul is about. Now, this I go through some of the biblical ideas about what this is about and how powerful it is. It's used to announce the bridegroom cometh. The shofar announces the total defeat over Satan death, hell and the grave. Pretty big. Joshua 6, when they blew this, the walls came down. These were 12 feet thick in places. They blow the shofar and shout. When we blow the shofar and shout, it doesn't matter how thick the, the spiritual walls that are stopping you from becoming who you're meant to be, they have to come down. That's the idea. Gideon's army was not with swords, but with shofars. The priests were sent out ahead of the army. <laughs> How'd you like to be a worship leader going out in the front of the army of God and this is all you have? <laughs> but <laughs> this is more powerful than swords, guns, weapons, nuclear, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Satan is the prince of the power of the air. The shofar pierces his kingdom and shatters it. I'll add this one in. The sound of the shofar is the same sound as God's voice speaking. Now, I mean, on Pentecost, 
they heard the sound of thunder, like it's actually like shofar blasts. And they actually died and rose again because the God's voice was so powerful. There's a lot in it. It confuses the enemy. It brings up the glory of God. It's a cry of war for, the, war for intercessors. It's an instrument of worship that pierces through the air into heaven itself. At the blowing of the shofar, people would be delivered, healed and financial breakthroughs. This is what Rabbi Isaac out of Tractate Rosh Hashanah 16b says. If the shofar is not sounded at the beginning of the new year, evil or a severe decree will befall it at the end of it. Why so? Because the accuser, Satan, has not been confu- confused. Now, we all do things, ouch, wrong. <laughs> Maybe I should put this down before I hit, knock myself out. Um, we all do things wrong. So the job of Satan, he's an angel and he has a job. He's like a, a uh, not the defence attorney, the other, other guy, the prosecutor. His job is to prosecute you before the, the throne of God saying, he did this wrong, he deserves punishment. He's a legalist. He says, they did this, they should be sick. They should lose out money. They shouldn't be blessed. He's an accuser going, blah, 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 blah. But when we blow the shofar, what happens in the heavenly realm, we're saying, no, he's our king. He's my substitute. He's the one I'm putting my faith in him. He gets totally confused by this where he can't act. He doesn't know what to do anymore because it's like, well, they're not standing by themselves. God is now their king. He can't do anything. So it's really important that we hear the sound of the shofar blast. It stops him acting. Now, I'm trying to get through this quickly. (laughs) The big key thing about Rosh Hashanah is repentance. I just want to go through repentance. So repentance in Hebrew is the word for teshuva. And Deuteronomy 32, 30 verse 2 defines it best, I think. The word return can be the word repentance. And it's simply this. It's not just a turning away from sin. It's actually not so much about the sin. It's more about the returning to God. You can't just, it's like, oh yeah, I repent of my sin. I love, what is it? Psalm 51, King David is repenting. He doesn't talk about his sin at all. He acknowledges I've sinned, but he doesn't talk about that. He says, I, I, want, I want this. I'm returning to this. That's what repentance is about. It's not about the sin. It's about him. I want relationship. And return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice in all that I command you today with all your heart and all your soul. So that tells me that repentance is not just something I say. It's not something I just believe in my head, but I have to feel it. It has to be my whole being involved in this repentance. It's like a cry out saying, God, I want to connect with you. I can't live without you. Hasidic or Hasidic Judaism interprets the deeper meaning of returning as follow, as follows. Um, and I've talked about this before, but the quick short thing is that, you know, God's name, we don't proclaim it because Jesus didn't. It was yud Hey vav Hey in the Hebrew. And it simply means beyond, beyond. Now, repentance is I repent until the great beyond, until God and all he is becomes my everyday present reality. We return until the extraordinary, miraculous infinity beyond becomes normal part of our experience. See, repentance is not, I've repented. That's like something I've done. Repentance is something we do. It's something that we live. We live in returning to Him. So we need to repent until we feel the sense and experience God's presence in everything we do. Now, they've come up with this beautiful acronym that defines what full repentance is about. And I love it. So the Hebrew word is teshuva. Now, the first one, tav, which is the teshuva tav, means whole heart, be wholehearted with the Lord your God. 
that comes from Deuteronomy 13, 18. This is why our heart has to be healed and made whole so that we can wholeheartedly experience his love and connect with him and be one with him. The next one is shin. I'm constantly aware of God. That comes out of Psalm 16, 18. Sorry, 16, 8. I have constantly placed the law before me, before my consciously. I'm constantly aware of God. I'm steady emotionally. No matter what is going on, He is my everything. I'm totally focused on Him. If we're distracted by fear, by life, by things that are going on, we haven't placed Him before us. These these things shouldn't bother us. The next one, Vav. Love your fellow as yourself. Leviticus 19, 18 and Mark 12, 31 says, love your fellow as yourself. I love a story that they, the rabbis used to teach. Teach me the whole Torah while I stand on one foot. And Rabbi Hillel says, oh, that's easy. Uh, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbour. That's the whole Torah. While the rest is commentary, therefore go learn it. It's so important that we learn how to love each other. And that's probably where we have the biggest problem. So repentance means learning to love, learning to love each other. The next one, vase, means I know him in all my ways. That's out of Proverbs 3, 6. The next one is, hey, walk modestly with the Lord your God. That's out of Micah 6, 8. Walk discreetly, humbly and modestly with the Lord your God. So something, as you can see, we have to develop ourselves in and we need to learn to walk in all these areas. That's what true repentance. So Elul is saying, God, I want each of these areas. I want to work and develop myself in these areas. So I've done that. So we proclaim him as king during this time. A king makes sure roads are good, the bridges don't collapse, people have enough to eat, the borders are secure and safe. It's not a glorious job. But Rosh Hashanah, we're inviting him to be king of even the mundane things in our life, the small things. Um, So what areas in our lives, we usually approach God and say, be king when I'm sick. We get desperate when we're, we're not well or when we have financial problems. Oh, God, I need your help now. He wants to be involved in everything, even the good stuff. He wants to be king. What areas of our lives, our finances, our marriages, our health that he hasn't been invited into? Our eating is all of our eating, how we eat with God, how we dress, our jobs, how involved is he? Our friendships. So the the key is when you make him king and you invite him into that area of life, that area of your life then starts getting elevated up. That's where godliness comes in. God gets involved. So Avinu Malkainu, our father, our king. This is um, a prayer that they go through. And this is the practical part. So everybody at home, if we could all stand, we're going to go through and we're going to pray this and do some practical. We need to pray with faith with all of our being. And remember, it's with our heart and our soul that we do this. So this is a vinu malkanu, which in Hebrew means our father, our king. So we'll pray together. Our father, our king, we have sinned before you. Our father, our king. We have no king but you. Our Father, our King, act benevolently with us for the sake of your name. Our Father, our King, renew us and bless us with a good year. Our Father, our King, a good year. Our Father, our King, remove from us all harsh decrees. Our Father, our King, annul the intentions of our enemies. Our Father, our King, fall the plans of our foes. Our Father, our King, wipe out every oppressor and adversary against us. Our Father, our King, clothe the mouths of our adversaries and accusers. Our Father, our King, 
remove pestilence, sword, famine, captivity, and destruction from the members of your covenant, including COVID. Our Father, our King, withhold the plague from your inheritance. Our Father, our King, pardon and forgive all our iniquities. Our Father, our King, blot out and remove our transgressions from before your eyes. Our Father, our King, erase in your abounding mercies all the records of our debts, our sins. Our Father, our King, bring us back to you in wholehearted repentance. And then we say, oh, our Father, our King, send our complete healing to the sick of your people. Our Father, our King, rend the evil aspect of the verdict decreed against us. Our Father, our King, remember us with favourable remembrance before you. Shana Tova. Everyone have a good year. So, I haven't finished. But you can see how that's a petition before God and it's a good one to go through regularly because it sets out everything. That, that's it. So let's all, Janet can come out. We're going to do a shofar blast and this is something that's going to happen in the spiritual realm and we're going to do this on Rosh Hashanah but we're building up. And to me, salvation is not... So it is on September 6th, the 8th, but it's today, it's now. There's no reason why the, the decree in your life and things can't change from this moment forth. And the enemy hears that, he's going to get confused and flee. Um, so sound in the shofar, the sound of, is the sound of teshuva, which we are saying we want to get closer. We want to have a closer walk with him. We do not want to have another year like last year. We want this year to get closer to God, closer to our innocence, closer to who we truly are. This is the whole theme of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So we consider what was right and wrong last year, where we can improve and promise God to do a better job with His help. The sound of the shofar is yearning. It's a sound of a simple cry and it's like intense sobs and more whimpering. For a month, we practice this closeness. It's meant to be an inspiration to closeness. So, oh, maybe sit for this. I'll just show you. This is Shofar Warfare, Browns Hall. I love it. It's anointed. You can sit this list. One, two, one, two, back, cool. So in this, we have warfare against us. There's a lot of injustice and things that are happening against people in our church that is just not on, like Tony being attacked and, and <laughs> David Page. There's so many of us that have been attacked and this declares war. Amen. This is Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of a command, with the voice of the archangel, with the sound of the shofar, the trumpet, and the dead in Christ will rise first. See how powerful this thing? Dead rise. So this is again, we're going to blow the shofar after this. I think that was my plan. Yeah. So this is an awesome prayer out of the um, Sadur. I've got one there. But Sadur is just, um, I've got one. Just a prayer book. It's actually just full of scripture and psalms and prayers and things like that. Pray. So I've taken this out of here. So we'll pray this together. Master of the universe, I hereby forgive anyone who's angered or antagonised me, who has sinned against me, whether against my body, my property, my honour, or against anything of mine, whether they did so accidentally, willfully, 
carelessly or purposely, whether through speech, deed, thought or notion. I forgive every, everyone, sorry. May, may no one be a punish because of me. May it be your will, Adonai, my God, and the God of my forefathers, that I may sin no more. Whatever sins I have done before you, may you blot out in your abundant mercies, but not through suffering or bad illness. May the expressions of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favour before you, Adonai, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. This is like, so... So I'm just going to show you something out of Psalms. This is how we do it. Clap you hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great King over all the earth. God has gone up with the shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. So Janet's going to blow the shofar as I... I'll just match the video if you can. And you blow it again and keep blowing it until we're blowing all the junk out. So I'm going to show again another video of my friend Dick blowing the shofar at, Brown, at Brownsville and join in. So I put the psalm up there because I'm trying to tell you guys, you guys need to shout with loud songs of joy, jump, raise your hands, clap, make a noise. I remember this awesome message Pastor Yarrow like 10 years ago, she talking about clapping. And it's like it drives. <laughs> we need to get excited and put all your emotion into it. So here we go. Make it loud. Um, I want you to listen. Whoever you sound this show for, I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to lift up your voices. And I want you to let the devil know that everything he's put on you is broken off. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Out of your life, everything else, everything, everything of the past being broken off your life, everything of the past. Just ask the Lord, what do you want from the Lord to do from now on? That He will rip something off your life. Just blow everything away from the past. Generational family curses being broken in the name of Jesus. Habits in your life being smashed and broken and leaving your life today. Poverty and lack, sickness, disease, generational grief, pain, sorrow and sadness. That the bloodline will be washed. Makashani karai. Nemora barundara besotara meri alakari andara besondana. Thank you, Lord, for a new day, a new beginning, starting from this very moment. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare over our lives, over our families, over our loved ones, over this church, over the transformation meetings, over, over Sydney, over Brisbane, over the nations around the world, that God is preparing His bride. Just make, just, just make that commitment today, God, to strip away those things. Only the Lord can do it, church. Right now, believe that something has taken place in your life, that you will never be the same again, that you're preparing yourself for something exciting that is going to take place. Thank you, Father, because that resurrection life is available right now, this very moment, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 
believe for healing, believe for restoration, believe for victories on this very moment on. These are God-appointed moments and days and we come in agreement. We come in agreement that His dunamis power, His resurrection life is available right now to break those curses and family curses that you've been carrying, even things for generations, that the bloodline is going to be changed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And you feel that something was broken. Just now, this very minute, something was broken. And the bloodline, those people who are sick today with COVID, that the bloodline will be changed today. Thank you, Lord. Starting with us, uh, starting with me today, starting with you today, right now, make that commitment that your body will be that vessel to blow out this COVID-19 right out of the nations in the name of Jesus. Because the Lion of the tribe of Judah is living and dwelling inside of every one of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that the righteous will be bold, bold as a lion, and the wicked flee when no one is pursuing them. Like Norm said, even the darkness leaves, church, as the trumpet is being blown. And you are the trumpet of this time, amen, because Christ has redeemed you to be the trumpet. You decree a thing, it will be established. You can't get any better. Give the Lord a clap, church. Thank you all for coming. What a, what, a, what a great morning. Just believe that something, your life will never be the same again from this day on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Love you all. And we'll see you, everyone, on Zoom and on YouTube. Join the same time to, tonight. Uh, it'll be on Zoom, isn't it? Tonight you'll be on Zoom. So 6 o'clock tonight, Yara has got a powerful message. Try and get these messages, church, and keep, continuously listen to them. Like Mandela said, her whole life, her family, you know, everything changes. Because God is doing something, you know. Yara, Norm, they spend hours and hours with these messages and seeking God. And believe, it's all the pure word of God, church. Something has to take place, amen. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs>